Well, it's windy, it's raining, and it's not letting up anytime soon. And uh, anyone who knows me knows I don't need an excuse to start modifying stuff in the shed on a wet day that really doesn't need to be touched. But the legends at Dometic Marine have given me that excuse today by hooking us up with a set of electronic trim tabs. Now, anyone who knows the Scout knows she pumps well above her weight already, but with a set of trim tabs on the back, I think it might just take it up to that next level. We've got the economy, we've got the horsepower, and I think we're gonna up those gains again with this one. I threw a set on yesterday just on one side to see how they went, and tell you what, they are one of the easiest units to install whatsoever. Gone are the days of hydraulic pumps, hoses, bleeding, all that sort of stuff. Electronic rams, electronic actuators, dials, you name it, these things have really stepped it up in the world of marine electronics. So today, we're gonna smack the next one on. We'll show you just how easy they are to install. And uh, then we're gonna take her out on the ocean and give it a run for its money. I wanna see if these things are all they're cracked up to be and whether they're really gonna enhance the performance of the old Scouty. She's already stable, she's already quick, she's already efficient. Can we take it up another level? We'll find out. I've never owned a boat with a set of trim tabs before, so this will be a 100% honest opinion on this one. Do I think they're worth it? Do I think they're not? We'll find out. So I'll show you what we're about to whack on, and we'll go install the second set. Okay, before we get stuck into this, I'll just quickly throw you through the main components of this system and it just shows how easy the design and thinking is on this one. So you've obviously got your trim tab itself, which bolts to the back of your transom. Your actuator lifts it up and down accordingly to help level your boat out. You've got your electronic actuator, which replaces your old school hydraulic ram. It's fully sealed, fully wired, ready to go out of the box with just a positive and negative connection with the plugs provided. And then you have got the brains of the whole operation, which is this little bad boy here. Now this is the Seastar Control Center. This particular one's the base model and the simplicity and the design and thinking on this is really cool. So if you want your boat to level out, and you're leaning right and you want to go left, you simply turn the dial left. If you want to go right, you turn it right. If you want your bow to go down, hit down, bow to go up, go up. Now on traditional trim tabs, I think the way they work traditionally is with your tabs going up and down on both sides with your buttons, you've kind of got to get a happy medium between your bow and your trim to level your boat out. Whereas this works totally independently and uh, the little brains in here knows how to compensate for your roll and your bow down at the same time without you having to do any of the thinking. So you've got more time to focus on where you're going, keep everyone safe, get home as comfy as you can. So that, to me, will be a game changer, especially in our little boat. She's a little flat bay boat, and the way and the distance we take it, uh, this will be a game changer for us. So I can't wait to see this in action. Obviously, there's a host of other components. You get all your wiring, screws, bolts, fittings, etc., as well as your set of instructions, which are super easy to follow, which in uh, most cases <laughs> isn't the case. So that's, uh, that's as hard as it gets, guys. It is a super basic kit and super easy to install. So quickly show you the one I threw on yesterday, and uh, then we'll get into setting up, throw this second unit on. And there she is. That's yesterday's install in all her glory. So, fully sealed, straight onto the tab there. You can see the actuator bolts on and then your wiring actually goes through the top there. So it keeps it super clean, really easy to keep waterproof. And uh, yeah, awesome little design. So we'll uh, get set up, ready to get onto the other side. Get it happening. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually tape off the section that I'm going to be working on. Now this does two things. If you're working on gel coat or an ice boat, it stops you scratching or marking any of the surface that's underneath while you're trialling and erroring whatever you're going to put in place. And secondly, it gives you something to draw on, scribble on, remark, and it won't affect the surface of the boat. 
So we'll quickly whip these guys on and uh, yeah, get the surface prepped, ready to go. Now that we've got the area taped off that we want to install the trim tab on, now's the time to dummy fit your trim tab. Make sure that everything aligns as per the instructions. I'll give you distances from strokes, centre of motor, etc, etc. And just make sure everything works with your boat. So my particular transom here, I've actually got this jut out here for a strengthened section for the motor. And that actually conflicts with the corner of the trim tab and means it can't go in the right place. So that's the cool thing about the guys at Dometic. Got in contact with them, told them what my situation was. They said, yep, you can modify the mounting brackets so long as you add a hole. So that's what we've got to do on this particular one. So always check with your manufacturer first. I'm sure if it doesn't work with your particular boat, they'll refund you and you can go down a different path. But in this instance, I was able to modify the bracket and uh, make it work perfectly for this particular setup. So we'll uh, get to measuring and marking out this one, get her cut off on the drill press, put another hole in her ready for mounting, and uh, yeah, start measuring up. Okay guys, so we've got the edge all trimmed nicely there to match the contour of our transom. And uh, we're just gonna match that hole on the corner there, throw in the drill press, Get it all drilled out nice and neat and uh, she'll be ready to mount. So let's get into that part. There she is, finished product guys. All nicely drilled, ready to go. Let's take her over and fit her up. See how we went. The instructions call for a six millimeter gap from the flush bottom of your hull to the underside of the trim tab. So I've got a six mil spacer here and it's just a matter of marking a guideline to follow. Flush with the bottom of the hull. Gives us a nice even gap along the bottom. Okay, so we've fitted our trim tab plate. We've got our little modification there to make it sit with the hole nicely. We've followed our little six mil line above the planing surface of the hull and we've marked all of our fixing holes. So the next step now is to start drilling. Now the instructions stipulate exact drill bits and depth. So uh, I'll teach you a little trick there. Grab your drill bit, you measure your depth, put a bit of electrical tape so you don't go any deeper than you have to. And we'll get these guys drilled out. So on to the next bit. Tab will be fitted very shortly. Okay, so we're ready to drill the holes in the transom, ready to mount the trim tab plate itself. So the instructions specified a depth of 32 millimeters. So what I do is on my pilot hole bit and my actual bit that's the specified diameter for the screws. I just put a little bit of electrical tape around the shaft of the drill bit and that just stops me going any deeper than the specified depth because you want all the purchase you can get with the screws when it comes to these things because there is a fair bit of force implied on them once they're in the water underway. So the more you can do to make sure everything's done perfectly, the better you'll be in the end result. So follow the instructions and you'll be just fine. So we'll get these drilled, get ready to mount the plate and uh, yeah, we're a third of the way there. Okay, so we've got all our holes drilled. Now a little lesson for anyone dealing with gel coat and putting big screws into it. Just use a countersink bit and lightly take the edge around your gel coat where the hole is away and it'll stop the screw biting in and cracking and blowing out your gel coat. So it's just a tip and it'll also help the uh, Sikaflex or marine sealant, whatever you use, 
to bind to the gel coat a bit better as well because it's not actually breaking the gel coat away and it's got a solid surface to stick to. And while we're on the topic of marine sealants, everyone knows how messy these can get. So another little trick, which is also why I put the tape on, just trace around the outline of your base plate or your trim tab, grab a razor blade, cut it out, and then no matter what you do around with cleaning your Sikaflex or sealant from the trim tab once you've fixed it, you can then just pull the tape off and you won't have all that excess mess on your hull that you have to clean off. So another quick little trip there that uh, will get you out of a mess, that's for sure. So what we'll do now is we'll quickly chase around ours, we'll cut it out and then uh, we'll prime the surface ready for some Sikaflex and screw this bad boy on. Okay, so we've cut it out, ready to go. I've hit the surface just really lightly with some super fine sandpaper and given it a clean with some solvent just to make sure it's perfectly clean, ready for the Sikaflex. And I've done the same with the trim tab backing plate itself. I've just given the backing plate a little hit with some sandpaper just to give that really good bind um, and cleaned it off also. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of Sika in each one of these holes. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of a web from hole to hole. So I'll go around each one just to get that really good seal. So what we do now is we line our Light up with these holes. We'll start a screw off in the two top ones to hold it in position. Now I'm just going to use an impact driver to start the screws. And then what we're going to do is we're going to finish them off with a screwdriver. So don't do them all the way up, just get them nice and set in and we'll finish them off by hand at the end. Okay, so we got the plate on, we got the sicker in and we've just feathered the screws in so they're all hanging out at about three or four mil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand tighten them the rest of the way. So what this does is is it avoids stripping of the screws because you only get one shot at this. <laughs> and it also gives the Sikaflex a good chance to get in between all the grooves and crevices and give you a really good seal. So what we'll do is we'll just work our way from one end to the other, fill them up by hand and then back to the start and just tighten them all up a second time and you can see uh, all the sealant oozing out there which is what you want you'd rather have more than not enough make it nice and watertight okay Happy days. So that's the plate fitted. So all we gotta do now is clean up this Sikaflex, take the tape off and uh, that's the plate fitted, ready to get onto the actuator. Okay, now that we've cleaned all the Sika up the best we can, it's time to pull the tape off. And as you will see, this does make life quite a lot easier when it comes to keeping all that unwanted Sikaflex off the rest of your hull. Bit of a lifesaver. And just like that. Beautiful. 
Okay guys, now we've got the plate fitted and ready to install the actuator, there is one really important step you need to do. So you need to get either a straight edge or a builder's level and you need to run it parallel to the bottom surface of the boat because the position of the ram is dictated by the offset of the plate itself. So in its set position where it's in rest mode or whether it's retracted, it actually sits higher than level on the boat so that if you're reversing or if you're going onto a trailer, it doesn't foul up on anything. So we'll get our straight edge fitted and uh, then we'll get on to fitting this ram. Okay, now we're ready to install our actuator. We've got the actuator and we've got two base plates. One goes on either end. So there's one with a hole on it for the wiring to go through, goes at the top and one at the bottom. So We'll uh, put the through bolt through the bottom one and the top one just to fit it temporarily. And uh, then we'll go and do the fit up placement of the ram, see how it all fits in. So now that we've got our ram dummy fitted with our brackets for top and bottom, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slot a couple of the guide bolts through the base plate to give us an idea of where this ram is going to sit. Now I know from the other side that it sits flush with the edge um, and if we've done our job properly, this should be perfectly the same, symmetrical and in the same place. So it's looking pretty spot on right there, which I'm super happy about. So what we're gonna do is now we know the rough area where the top plate's gonna go, We'll do the exact same thing with the tape. We'll put some tape there, then we can dummy mark our holes, cut out around the plate itself, get ready for the Sikaflex and the screws for that section as well, and get going with the fitment. Okay, now that I've got everything set, I've got my spaces underneath my trim tab so that my tab position at rest is at the specified height as per the installation manual. I've bolted my base plate to the tab to get the position for the top mounting bracket. So what I've done here is we're just tracing around the bracket itself on the tape in its optimal position. You've got to make sure that it's nice and straight so when it extends, there's no force on the ram in either direction. It's nice and straight and parallel. And then after that, we can simply pop our bolt out Put that aside, put a rag over the nut there, rest our ram down, and I'll continue to trace out our bracket in our desired position. Mark our holes for the screws, as well as the major hole that the cabling will be going through. And with all that done, we're ready to drill some more holes. Okay, so we've got her prepped, ready to go. We've done the exact same process as we did down the bottom. Drilled the three holes for the screws. We use the countersink bit to take the gel coat back so it doesn't crack away. And then you've got your main hole for your wire cabling that goes through the transom to the other side. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna thread our bracket down over the wire. Uh, we've got a little rubber grommet that will seal it after that and then we'll fit it to the transom and uh, we're nearly home and hosed. Okay, so we've fed our wire through. We've got a nice little rubber grommet that they provided that you put a bit of sicker on to seal it and a little stainless steel backing plate. Now we're just going to put some sicker flex on both the bracket and the pad on the back of the transom. Again, make sure you go around the screw holes. Nice dob around the cable because it is a through transom penetration, you want to make sure that's nice and sealed. 
Just put it on all the surfaces that are gonna come in contact with the bracket. Okay, now that we got all our sticky stuff on, it's time to thread the wire through the hole in the transom. You just want to feed that through all the way. Now comes the messy part. Or not so messy, depending how good you are, but I usually tend to uh, get pretty buggered up when it comes to these things. Put one of the screws in as a guide. Just get it started with the drill. And again, we'll hand tighten them at the end. So one, two, Maybe a big screwdriver and just crank them down by hand so nice and snug but not stripped. Go around again, tighten. Beautiful. So from here on in guys, we've got both the top and bottom brackets, we've got the plate at the right height, we've got everything installed the way it should be. All we have to do is clean up our little bit of Sikaflex here, take the tape off and we're 100% done the physical install side of the trim tab itself. Throw the bolts in, tighten them up to the torque spec and the instructions and we're ready to get on to the electronic side. And let me tell you, this should go pretty simply. It is basically a plug and play unit with a power connection. So I'm looking forward to this. It should come together super quick. And uh, yeah, we'll be on the water as soon as that weather clears up. So let's get this all tidied up and finished. Then we'll climb in the boat, start pulling some wiring through. Now we're coming to the pointy end of the install. All we have to do is pick a spot on the dash for the controller and it's as simple as plug and play. This is really, really one of the most simplistic installs I've done in a long time. I've given you an option of two wires here, a positive and negative for the power and an ignition and or separate switch wire. So basically as soon as you turn the ignition on, the helm unit will power up and you're ready to go. They'll auto retract on the ignition until you say otherwise on the controller. So we're gonna get to wiring this bad boy up, get it all installed and tested and then hit the water, see how this bad boy performs.
guys, the verdict's in. We have punched it out here in some pretty average weather today. We are hiding in this beautiful crystal clear creek at the moment. And I can tell you legitimately, these electronic trim tabs from Dometic are an absolute game changer, especially on our little boat where we wouldn't have been able to fit a traditional set of trim tabs with the hydraulic actuators and everything in our little setup here. With the ease and simplistic design of the electronic system, we've been able to bolt them in, retrofit them with minimal installation. And I tell you what, they have absolutely changed the way this boat handles. We've gained economy, we've gained top end speed, and the overall handling of this boat is just a totally different animal. The easy to control dial system that these guys have come up with is an absolute pleasure to use especially in rough conditions instead of having to do your two trim tab system and a bit of guesswork into where the boat's going to go and how it's going to react the segregation between the pitch and the roll is something else you can crack your bow down in choppy seas so you get that really nice smooth ride and if people are traversing to the other side of the boat to cop out of the spray it's as simple as turning the dial to compensate for the roll and you've got a level boat with a smooth ride and all the thinking is done for you. These guys have really smashed it out of the park with this one, and it is an absolute pleasure to use, let me tell you. With the additional features of the auto-retracting with the home button, as well as the auto-retracting when it's wired up to the ignition, these are a simple plug and play unit, and I'm 110% happy we got the opportunity to whack them on our boat because this has absolutely changed the way I boat from now on, and I will not own another boat without a set of these trim tabs on 100%. I strongly guarantee you guys, get on board, have a look at these. They are one of the simplest systems to install. You would have seen from the installation part of the episode, pretty much plug and play once they're bolted on and you are ready to hit the water. So highly recommended. We're gonna head out of here now, guys. We got a bit of diving to do today and a sunset cocktail or two to have back at the uh, local resort. So we're gonna leave you there and check them out, guys. Dometic Marine electronic trim tabs. These things are next level. You won't regret it.